All right, moving right along, we're right in the middle of chapter 25 now, and we're going to start to learn some new and very, well, some more new and very valuable reactions. This one's called allylic halogenation. So just to give you some context as to where we are, we've covered the stability of radicals. We know how to predict where um, a radical will be formed. The most stable radical, like the most stable carbocation, is always going to be formed. And we've looked at a big overview of what they do. The first reaction we learned was this free radical halogenation of alkanes, which frankly is, you know, kind of a odd reaction. We don't usually use alkanes as starting materials, but that's the one reaction we have now that will make alkanes into something useful besides gasoline to power our snowmobile. All right, so allylic bromination, what's that all about? Well, we we know it's the stability of the radical that's formed, right? If it's an alkane, we're going to get a tertiary radical formed, preferentially to a secondary, preferentially to a primary. But that's with alkanes. What happens when you have a double bond as part of your molecule? Well, we've seen that resonance explains everything. So if you have a double bond and an allylic hydrogen, then it's the allylic hydrogen that's going to be plucked off because that particular radical can be stabilized by delocalization. So that means we have issues because sometimes the two resonance contributors for that allylic radical might not be identical. And it also means we have to pay really careful attention to which reagent we need to use. So the selectivity issue is illustrated nicely here. So I pluck off, you know, line structure, stupid line structure, one of these three allylic hydrogens, and what do I get? Well, of course, I get the allylic radical right here. But wait just a doggone minute. That allylic radical is delocalized, right? So. I have two resonance contributors and of course one hybrid, the hybrid looking something like this, where this is a hydro, well let's just leave it like so, and kind of a dashed line here, Ooh, it's going to be hard to draw this dashed line, I'll make it really big. So here's my allylic radical, partially here and partially here, so we'll we'll put a delta to say there's a little bit of radical character at the terminal carbon and a little bit of radical character at the middle carbon. And if that's the case, which it is, that means that when I add my bromine fudge, I'm going to get two isomers, completely different physical properties, completely different molecules. And you know as a synthetic chemist, that's really not what you want. So how do we control this? Well, one way we control this, in fact, the way we control this, to some extent anyway, is by using a new reagent. Obviously, we can't use just plain old-fashioned bromine, because if we use plain old-fashioned bromine, it would add to the double, double bond in an electrophilic addition reaction. So instead, we use something called N-bromosuccinamide, and that's this molecule shown here. Interesting molecule, it has a, a nitrogen-bromine bond, and as the book explains, that's a pretty easy bond to homolytically cleave. And it turns out that in during the course of the reaction, n bromosuccinamide generates a very low, very steady concentration of bromine. And we'll see that's critical for carrying out the allylic halogenation reaction. So it's the best of both worlds. It's radical, as I said because that bond is really easily cleaved by a little light or a little heat, only 194 kilojoules per mole. So there's our initiation step. But also the best of both worlds because it generates the bromine. And here you see the difference again between a homolytic reaction mechanism and a polar reaction mechanism. So we have the little fish hook arrows here, but we have 
down here are typical double-headed arrows of a polar mechanism and it turns out that if you look at the mechanism and the book covers it in great gory detail there's a tiny amount of bromide generated and the bromide can react with the protonated n bromosuccinamide to generate just what we need this low steady state concentration of bromine all right so since the book covers this in such good detail I'm not going to go through it in gory detail myself I'll just recap it in words so think about what we're saying and follow along in the book so that you really understand this mechanism so again the initiation step is hemolysis of that nitrogen bromine bond easily done just a little bit of heat or light that gives me the bromine radical and the succinamide radical the next step of course is you have your alkene reagent I mean your alkene starting material so that is going to react with one of these radicals in an atom transfer to abstract the allylic hydrogen so it's that allylic radical that's your you know, reactive species in the next step well in the step that leads to product all right then <clears throat> excuse me then we have proton transfer from the HBr that's generated right here that's going to protonate my n bromosuccinamide okay and when I do that of course proton transfer means I generate Br minus okay what next well then that Br minus is going to react with the protonated n bromosuccinamide which we saw on the previous slide that generates exactly what we wanted just this little tiny amount of bromine and then that bromine reacts with the allylic radical to give you your allylic halogenated product all right again the key here is that you have the allylic radical in the presence of a small amount of bromine that gives you the product so that's kind of hard to get and there's a handout on the Moodle page that explains this in a little bit more detail but basically it's a competition if there's bromine in the presence of my alkene why wouldn't it add to give me what we've always seen the 1,2 dibromide well here's the deal basically since you only have a very low concentration of bromine and bromide ever 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 that means <clears throat> if you're looking at these two in in the presence of one another bromine and say your alkene being cyclohexene well sure the bromine can add to the cyclohexene and that gives you the bromonium ion but note very importantly here that that is reversible this is an equilibrium the bromonium ion is in equilibrium with the alkene and the bromine to begin with at the same time these are all in the same beaker together I have my allylic radical so here's my allylic radical and in the presence of bromine man oh man it's gonna go in a heartbeat reacting with bromine to give me my product meanwhile in order for me to get to the 1,2 dibromocyclohexane I actually have to have bromide the Br minus react with the bromonium ion and since this is reversible and this is a very low concentration you know that just doesn't happen not to any extent at all so keep in mind that the reason allylic halogenation works is because we use n bromosuccinamide which is what leads to a small low concentration of BR2 and the rest is explained in that equilibrium alrighty so this chapter has now really expanded your synthetic toolbox so we start out with an unsymmetrical alkene like methylcyclohexene we now know how to remove pluck off one of those allylic hydrogens and replace it with a bromine super handy okay we now know well we have always known or at least since chapter 11 
how to add bromine across a double bond by an electrophilic addition reaction. We've known for a long time how to put a bromine on the most substituted carbon. That's just plain old electrophilic addition. And we're about to learn, very cool, how to do the anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr across a double bond. So just to put in your reagents, allylic halogenation, NBS, addition across a double bond, bromine, addition to the double bond, but just adding H and Br, well, HBr. And this, well, you're about to find out. Finally, I was going to tell you a little story about a friend of mine. He was trying to write a new, cat, really catchy, you know, kind of a fun drinking song, but he couldn't get past the first few bars. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's all for now, and stay tuned for that next exciting addition to your synthetic toolbox, anti-Markovnikov edition of HBR across a double bond. Woohoo!